Okay, to talk about reactions of haloalkanes, we get into nucleophilic substitution first. Uh, first thing to realize, if you're a primary haloalkane, you go through a reaction known as substitution nucleophilic bimolecular. And if you are tertiary, for sake of ID, you go to substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. If you are a secondary, we're not going to worry about you because you have both possibility of SN1 and SN2. So that's a good thing. We, we're just going to concentrate on primary or tertiary. Now, nucleophiles that you are limited to know are uh, the strongest is cyanide. Then you have hydroxide. You also have to know why uh, the strength is like that. Then you have ammonia, and you also have H2O as the weakest nucleophile. Uh, substitution, by definition, is you substitute the halogen with one of these nucleophiles. Now, the halogen I will pick and choose today is, let's say, I take um, bromoethane, C2H5Br. Now, I'm going to open this up slightly in structure fashion. So you have two carbons and the bromine is attached on the second on the first carbon. You should agree this is a primary haloalkane, but right now we're not going to get into mechanism. Uh, one thing you should know is that this carbon, in terms of electronegativity, is slightly positive and the bromine is slightly negative. So this is the positive charge that the, these nucleophiles love to attack. Nucleophile by definition is uh, those that love nucleus or positive charges. So they like to attack this carbon and therefore they substitute bromine. So in terms of possibilities, let's just put them together. You should know what you produce. If you add it to dilute potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide the hydroxide which is a nucleophile will replace bromine and you will produce an alcohol C2H5OH and then on the one of your byproduct is potassium bromide or sodium bromide so this was a sort of nucleophilic substitution of bromine by the nucleophile and if the, you agree this is primary this reaction is known as SN2 we worry about that later now let's put another uh, nucleophile same haloalkane this time I take cyanide let it be potassium cyanide so potassium and sodium are good to be used for hydroxide and cyanide then again this is SN2 and I substitute the bromine with cyanide and the byproduct is potassium bromide. Now this you should also be able to first of all uh, realize this is a nitrile functional group and it has one two three carbons so it's propane nitrile. Now the good thing about nitrile is you still can add hydrogens to it and you can make an amine and I'm going to do this here because I might not get a second chance to do it. So this you should also know, if I add two hydrogens, a nickel catalyst, this is possible to hydrogenate this and give you C2H5, CH2, NH2. So we just expanded the nitrile into a larger amine. You have three carbon members, so it's propane amine or aminopropane. Aminopropane. Now let me add uh, my last nucleophile which I want to go after is ammonia. I'm not worried about water. You're not going to be challenged on that. So let me take my bromoethane one more time. This time I add ammonia to it. Substitution, nucleophilic, bimolecular. We worry about uh, the two later, bimolecularity. Bromine is going to be substituted. By NH2 and then you have H positive and Br minus. Now this is uh, 
ethylamine or amino ethane. Now, this itself could be a new uh, nucleophile because you still have a nitrogen that can. So let me also take this newly formed nucleophile and add it to my original haloalkane because you have a possibility of facing a reaction like this. Plus C2H5 NH2. I still have a lone ba uh, electron. I'm still a Lewis base. I can attack the carbon and I will give you C2H5, NH, C2H5. This is one way to write it. I don't like to write it like this, but it might get the point across. Now this is a amine that you have a two ethyl, so diethyl amine or amino diethyl.